Hey then guys and welcome to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George. I scale brands up to center phase with paid traffic and I also teach agency owners how to do the same. And in this video, I want to discuss how you as an agency owner can basically pick your niche and structure your offer in a way that fits your lifestyle best. In my opinion, the easiest way to get up to seven figures with your agency is by building an agency that complements your own lifestyle or your ideal lifestyle, I should say. So if you have an agency that you are not truly happy with or your positions in your agency in a way that doesn't truly make you feel fulfilled, then it's going to be extremely difficult to scale up to seven figures because it's going to be an uphill battle from day one. So what I like to do is I actually like to look at your ideal lifestyle first and then reverse engineer how you can basically take that lifestyle and then augment your agency in a way that will enable you to scale up to seven figures easily. So takeaway points from this video is the following. The best niche or the seven figure niche that everyone is trying to find is the niche that fits your lifestyle best. So what I would do if I was you is grab, you know, pen and paper and then write down what your ideal lifestyle looks like. And I don't mean in terms of how much time you're gonna be spending on the agency, but really go into details, you know, what does your day-to-day -day look like if you had everything figured out? How much time do you spend indoors? How much time do you spend outdoors? When you're outdoors, what activities are you doing? When you're indoors, same thing again. Do you want to be tied down to a specific place or, you know, do you want to be free to roam the world? You know, there is no right or wrong. I've mentioned this in previous videos as well. You know, whatever your ideal lifestyle looks like is completely up to you. And, you know, of course, all these gurus are going to say that you need to be doing X, Y, and Z, buy, not rent, go to Dubai and stuff like that. But you need to look at yourself. You know, what is it that you want? What does your ideal lifestyle look like? And then once you have that, we then need to find an offer that complements your ideal lifestyle. Okay, so you forget about the niche right now. It's all about your lifestyle, what you want out of life, what you want to achieve in life, what you want to do in life. And then we need to find an offer that complements that. And then, and only then, once you've figured out your ideal lifestyle, what your north star is, where you want to go, and you've got an offer that fits perfectly, you know, in your lifestyle, then we can take it a step back again, and we can find a niche that actually wants your offer. And what you'll notice is that when you figure all of this out, when you have that sort of triangle where you have your lifestyle on point, you have your offer on point, and you have a niche that actually wants your offer, it will all fit in together nicely. You'll figure it out that it's, you know, it's an absolute perfect fit. So that means that your niche fits your lifestyle, your lifestyle fits your offer, and then your offer fits your niche. Okay, so the first question is, what is your end goal? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to do in life? And then once you decide on your end goal, every decision you made from that point onwards should be in line with your end goal. So there will be opportunities along the way, but then you need to ask yourself, is that opportunity going to take me further or closer to my end goal? Same goes for me. You know, on a daily basis, I get pitched multiple business ideas from various people, either you know known or unknown people. And then what I need to do, whether or not I like the business idea or I like the opportunity, I need to ask myself, is this going to take me further or closer to the goal that I want to achieve? For example, uh, quite recently, I got pitched an idea where I do the media buying for a very large affiliate marketing company, which is will basically very quickly get up to six figures in ad spends a month. And of course, the way we structure everything is, you know, according to the ways we teach in console text, is where I either take a percentage of the ad spend or a percentage of the revenue. So if you're spending a hundred thousands a month on ads, even if you only take 10% of ad spend, that is still a 10K a month retainer. Let's say we have a three roll ass and you take 10% of the page conversion value, a hundred K in spend, three roll ass, we just 300 K retain. If I take 10% of that, that is a 30K a month deal. Or is that going to take me closer or further away from my goals? I actually decided against it because I think that it will not be in line with my goals with where I want to get to in life, where I want to get to with my agency, and also the amount of time that I want to put into wage and every day. 
So despite that being a very lucrative opportunity, I actually decided against it because I know that in the long run, that additional income compared to the amount of weight I would need to put in would not be worth it for me. So now let's translate all of this to the agency world because obviously I understand that this might be quite average theory for you guys. Let's say we want to get up to 100k a month. Yeah, so we've decided that our ideal lifestyle is we put in X amount of weight. We are a, uh, you know, a high ticket media buyer, high ticket market. I'm wanting up to 50k a month in revenue for our agency or profits, if you will. Yeah, again, depends on what your goals are. And we want to do that by running Facebook ads for female fashion stores. Um, and then we take a percentage of revenue on the back end. Now, what does that look like? How can you analyze whether or not the deal that you're going to get, so the potential client that you're in talks with, is actually going to be a right fit for your agency? Well, then we need to look at the numbers. So what we do when we are on the verge of signing a potential client is you actually get analyst access to their store and we get analyst access to their ad accounts. And then we look at the numbers. Is it worth my time? Because right now, obviously, when you're just starting out, feel free to take on any client you want. But once you get up to bigger numbers and once you are actually, you know, uh, setting up a very lucrative agency for yourself, you need to be a bit more picky about the clients that you want to take on. And this will mean the difference between you making six figures a year or seven figures a year. So let's say for this example, we have a female fashion store. Uh, they're doing 40k a month. They've got 5,000 a month in ad spend, at least you know, from the previous one. Because obviously you haven't started yet. Uh, Brass is to 50% profit margin. You know, they've got 10 to 15 products on their store, something like that. Um, AOV is $80 and their store invasion base is 0.8%, something like that. Yeah. So those are the rules that we're working with. And then, you know, it's basically up to you to decide, okay, is this worth your time? Bear in mind that store conversion rate is 0.8%. That means that if, you know, we have 100 people on the store, less than one person is actually going to become a buyer. So less than one person will actually purchase. So what we can then do is offer them an upfront store conversion rate done for you service and that is also what we do within our agency so if we notice that the store conversion rate is lacking for our clients charge them an onboarding fee from anywhere between two and a half k to five k a month again because our clients are of a certain size that two and a half k to five k is feasible for them you know they can still get a return on investment if i charge them two and a half two and a half k or five k you know for the onboarding fee so the onboarding fee will basically have the following deliverables. Store conversion rate optimization. So we'll do a full CRO order you know, to boost the store conversion rate and to also boost the average order value. Because you need to understand that if you spend the same amount, but the average order value goes up, then naturally the return has spent will go up as well. If you spend $50, and the average order value is fifty dollars. Then of course you have a ROAS of one. If you spend fifty dollars and there's all kinds of upsells and downsells and stuff like that on the back end, and the average order value goes up to a hundred dollars, then the ROAS will automatically become two, even though you're only spending the same amount and the store conversion rate stays the same. Okay, and then secondly, as part of that onboarding process, we will also set up Cladio for them. So we'll set up very simple flows, like a welcome flow, an abandoned car flow, and so on and so forth, just to have that all set up. So that again, we don't necessarily be spending more on the ads, but we'll still be getting more pages on the back end. Thirdly, of course, we'll be bringing them, we'll be bringing them into our ecosystem. So we'll be onboarding them as a client. We get access to the business manager, access to the uh, shop by store, access to the email marketing software. If they already have one, if not, you know, obviously we've set the one Clavio. If they want TikTok ads, get access to their TikTok accounts and so on and so forth. And then lastly, as past that onboarding process, I pass that two and a half to five K onboarding fee, we'll also do a full customer avatar uh, research for them. And the funny thing is about that customer avatar research, it's something that larger agencies will charge anywhere from 10 to $20,000 for because it's so viable to them. Easiest way to do it is to actually look at the you know, best customers, so the customers that page the most from their store, analyze them, and then see are there any similarities between those people. A uh, quick example, we work with a skincare brand, and they were really struggling to get sales. So the interest that they were targeting at the time was stuff like Nivea, skincare, skincare routine, and so on and so forth. We then came in, we did the customer uh, analysis for them, and we noticed that their top five, you know, basically best uh, purchasing clients, they all wore Air Jordans. So what we then did was we set up a campaign where we targeted the interest Air Jordan. 
And that was the very first time that this client actually got profitable sales on the front end. So it's a subscription shop on the back end, they do actually make profits. But this was the first time that they made the profits on that first pages. Then we look back at their target audience. We notice that quite often they uh, purchase from a store called Nasty Elk, and then we start to target them that as an interest as well. Same thing again, boosting sales, boosting ROAS, and you know, it was actually profitable on that first pages. So all of that will be part of the onboarding process, and that's where we charge anywhere from 2.5 to 5K. Okay, so we've already gone from a standard client where you know, Google started to charge a thousand or more or something like that. And we now have an onboarding fee where we make sure that everything is set up correctly and the stock and raise rate is boosted in such a way that we know we can get sales. Okay, so we've gone from a 1,000 on clients to a 1,000 on clients with a 2.5K onboarding fee. And then what we do is we also charge the percentage of the back end. So what we'll do is either charge a percentage of ad spends or a percentage of page conversion mode. So let's look back at those numbers I just mentioned. And then let's say, you know, we run the ads for a month and we go, um, you know, income wise, we get them to 60K a month. Uh, we end up spending 6K on the ads rather than 5K because we know it's profitable. Uh, we got them a ROAS of five instead of a ROAS of two, if I remember correctly. Uh, again, profit margin stays the same, still 50%. We still have 12 products. Uh, the AOV is now obviously gone up, you know, the AOV has gone up to a hundred, uh, hundred dollars and the stock and base rate has gone from 0 0.8 to 1.6. Okay, so with these numbers in mind, I'll try and get this up on the screen. We have the old numbers on the left and then we have the new numbers on the right. So as you see, if you can produce numbers like this, then there's no reason why you should be charging a 1,000 a month to retain it. So rather than charging just a 1,000 a month, we have the onboarding fee, which is 2.5k. Let's say we charge them two and a half K as well, you know, as I'll retain that, you know, if we look at their numbers, it's actually still profitable for them. They're still making a major profit. And we also get a percentage of the back end. So let's say we take 12% of pay's conversion value. And then like I said, you know, they spent uh, 6,000 on ads with a ROAS of five, which makes basically thousand dollars. We take 12% of that, which is $2,600 if my maths are correct. Apologies if that is uh, incorrect. But as you can see, we've gone from like 1,000 clients to a client where we charge two and a half K up front, two and a half K will be, and then we also have 3,600 in back end uh, revenue coming through. So from that one client, we've now made $8,600 in one month. And that is just one client, guys. Imagine having 10 of those. You know, that is what we teach in Consult Text. And that is why you know, I'm not impressed when people say, you know, they've got 40, 50 clients or that they, they're getting 12 calls booked a day and stuff like that because no appointment setting and appointment setting agencies are popular now, right? I'm not impressed by that. I'm impressed by the agency that is doing multiple seven figures or seven figures with, you know, a small amount of very large clients because they have those back end deals set up. And that is what we teach in Consult Texture. We show you how to do exactly what I've just mentioned, but it all starts with you. So it all starts with your lifestyle. What do you want to achieve out of life? What do you want to do in life? And then we find a business model or we structure your business in a way that will augment what it is that you want to do and what you want to get out of life. So hope that makes sense. Hope this was helpful to you. If you liked this video, please leave it a thumbs up or let me know what you'd like to see from the channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.